My name is Dr. Stavi Lekolwa. I'm an astronomer and lecturer at the University of Johannesburg's uh, physics department. And uh, I have a passion for space sciences and exploring the universe and would love to spend the rest of my life doing this job. It's awesome. So my interest in astronomy began quite early on in my childhood. I remember being in my school library when I was in grade six or seven and I found a book called Space and Time. And it was a kid's book uh, that told the reader about different phenomena that take place in the universe. And I was especially captivated by a page that talked about black holes, which are singularities all over space that uh, have such a strong gravitational pull that not even light can escape from them. And essentially the laws of physics break down beyond their borders. And that really captivated my imagination. I thought this is incredible that there's an object or many objects like this that exist physically that violate principles in physics, or at least we haven't been able to understand their physics yet. So I thought, okay, I want to grow up and be that person. <laughs> or maybe join a team. Now I realize it's teams of people that do research um, and find out what's happening within black holes. I started out um, at the University of Cape Town where I took an undergraduate program uh, in physics and astronomy all the way from first year to third year. I then went into an honors program through the National Astrophysics and Space Sciences program and continued to look for opportunities to get a postgraduate education in astrophysics, particularly one that would expose me to research that was being carried out beyond the borders of South Africa. And that's how I met my master supervisor, Professor Matt Jarvis, and he worked with Dr. Kim McAlpine, who's still in astrophysics at the moment, and they helped me through my master's. Thereafter, I found an advertisement for a program in Germany uh, known as the International Max Planck Research School program, which takes place in Munich, in the south of Germany. And I applied for it and was very grateful to be given a place. And that's where I met my PhD supervisors, Joël Vernet and Carlos de Broek, where I worked on a physics project or an astrophysics project at the European Southern Observatory. And that was focused on studies of radio galaxies, specifically those that are very distant. And we use these incredible instruments that are located in Chile. The first one is uh, MUSE, it's known as MUSE, the Multi-Unit Spectroscopic Explorer. And it is a spectrometer that is mounted on the very large telescopes, or one of the very large telescopes in Paranal in Chile. And this is also run by ESO. We're using that optical data as well as millimeter or submillimeter data, which is captured by the Atacama Large Millimeter Array, also in Chile, in the Atacama Desert. Um, I was able to study the properties of gas, halo gas, around very distant radio galaxies, and that was my PhD project. Yeah. So the most challenging aspects of my work, I would say, are time management, being able to juggle teaching and supervising students, so taking care of the future crop of STEM leaders, and also producing my own research, which should be published in peer-reviewed journals. That's quite a task. There's so much to get through, but I'm learning slowly, bit by bit. I'm learning how to uh, accomplish both and do them successfully at the same time. So my advice to young black women specifically that are looking to pursue careers in STEM is always remember that talent is only a part of your success. Um, skill that you build from putting in effort and time and being disciplined is a very important factor in you being able to achieve your goals. Oftentimes we think that because our experiences through life have been difficult, that uh, we haven't had a good start, um, achieving our goals will not be possible, but that's not true. It's possible for every one of us and we just have to believe and put in the time and know that we can reach the, the top of our game if we are able to stay focused and also 
remove mental barriers that get in your way. So during my spare time, I'm a bookworm. I love books. I'm interested in biographies. I love fiction, historical fiction, contemporary fiction, romantic fiction. Yes, I read romance. It's very embarrassing, but I'm going to confess that. And um, I'm a gamer. I love PC games. Um, I've also got a Nintendo Switch. So there's some kiddie aspects of my personality that come out quite frequently. And um, yeah, TV. I'm really interested in following shows and watching movies. But um, yeah, yeah, all of these <laughs> spare time things are very self-oriented. So I'm thinking of ways in which I can be more altruistic with my spare time. I've started writing popular science articles, which I publish on Medium, where I explain very high level astrophysics concepts in a way that hopefully anyone can understand. So I want to learn the public communication of science and um, also want to, to get out there physically and uh, talk to young women uh, about STEM careers and what they're interested in and try to uh, uh, essentially help them build their skills and reach their goals, maybe have uh, hackathons where we can uh, focus on building skills and programming. That's very important with the fourth industrial revolution. We need a nation of people that are very technologically acute and know how to write code um, so that we can uh, build a more technologically developed country. So I am working on studying the properties of radio galaxies uh, that are observed with Meerkat. I should actually say galaxies in general that are observed with Meerkat because in the radio continuum you can pick up galaxies that form stars very rapidly or galaxies that have um, very active cores that emit tons of radio emission. So you get different types of galaxies um, and I want to use uh, Meerkat radio continuum survey data to understand how galaxies evolve with cosmic time, what the properties were, physical properties were of the earliest galaxies that up until now we haven't been able to detect because our telescopes have not been sensitive enough. I'd say overall it's galaxy evolution. The University of Johannesburg, the future reimagined.